So we've still got some people coming in, but um, I'll just kind of go ahead and kind of get started. Uh, you know, this is like, I want it to be really informal. So, you know, if you have any questions, it's like, just holler. I mean, like we all know each other pretty much. Um, you know, don't be afraid to type in the chat or just, you know, unmute, unmute and holler at me. That, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, I'll try to, you know, answer everything I can. And then of course, if, you know, if anybody wants to stick around after and talk about anything else, you know, I'm good to talk basketball whenever and, and all that. But, um, I think mo like everybody who originally said they definitely wanted to do it. We've got in here now. Um, I, I tried to send everybody, uh, I tried to send everybody a, uh, like an outline thing. Uh, I know sometimes it gets hard to take a bunch of notes at clinics and stuff, especially when they're, you know, going over a lot of stuff. So uh, hopefully that'll help some. A uh, couple things before we kind of get into it. Um, you know, one thing is, you know, it is pack line, but it's also kind of a hybrid. Uh, when I first started doing it, like, I don't know, eight years ago, whenever, uh, I did it right by the book. So, you know, however the pack line guys said to, you know, send the ball, which, you know, send the ball middle, I'd send middle, um, you know, whatever. But I've kind of changed over the years. I think our game at the high school level is different. And so I try to, you know, just adapt it to my teams, to my players and, and to our level. So all this, and I'll try to tell you, you know, if you want the, the purest view, I'll try to give you that too. Uh, but I'll tell you how we do it. And then I'm going to try really hard not to get off topic. You know, this is about pack line. It's about, you know, but if there's other things I think that are really key into it, I'll try to mention that as well. You know, one thing I'll say is, <clears throat> um, you know, one thing I will say about it is it, it is an identity. And I think, you know, whatever your identity is, just have it, you know, have one. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, like we're going to sell to our kids and we're going to sell it like our life depends on it. Um, you know, like this is our identity, you know, like our kids know what we're doing. Um, you know, we can ask them questions and they can answer it, uh, you know, and uh, you know, everything we do, like everything, how we guard everything, you know, it all, it all goes together. It's all part of our identity. So, you know, just one example we'll hit on <clears throat> towards the end, you know, even like based on out of bounds defense, you know, like our, our big thing is we are just, we don't want to give up an easy bucket ever. I mean, ever. And so, you know, we want to make everybody take tough twos. I think the hardest place to play defense is based on out of bounds. And you know, our baseline out of bounds defense is designed to not give up a bucket. So we're not going to deny passes. We're not going to do all that stuff that usually lets people score. Um, you know, you may create a turnover. It, it's just, it all goes together. And so we're just going to, you know, we're going to, everything we do, um, it's just, it's, we're, we're thoughtful about those things uh, because it's just a part of our identity. You know, if, if we were a Havoc team and we pressed the whole time and we got up in the ball, we were in the passing lanes, then we'd probably do the same thing based on out of bounds, just create that, that mentality or that identity. Uh, but this is something that, you know, your kids buy into. Uh, one thing I absolutely love about pack line, and I try to tell everybody with this is um, with pack line, any kid can play it. You know, there's certain defenses, you know, you're not going to ask any kid to do something they can't do. Any kid can keep the ball in front of them. Um, you know, not every kid can press well. Not every kid can rotate really well and cover a lot of ground for foot speed reasons, for whatever reason. There's no kid you can't plug into this defense that they can't play it and play it really, really well. Um, so I think it just adapts to a lot of play. You know, I think it adapts well, all that. Um, you know, just kind of the big idea stuff, and I'll just try to follow the, uh, follow the outline. You know, the big idea stuff, uh, pack line, um, it, is, it is essentially just a 16-foot arc um, around the, you know, it mirrors the three-point line, and it goes just above the nail. And, you know, one thing is, uh, we, we will tape, we will tape that pack line down, you know, especially right, right away, um, in the year, we'll tape the pack line down. So our kids know what it is. They know where it is. They know where they're supposed to be. And we'll leave it down for a long time. Um, so we can show and film and we can stop and show them when they're there and when they're not, um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty simple as far as, okay. If you're, if you're on the ball, you can be outside the pack line. If you're not guarding the basketball, you are inside the pack line. 
Now, where you are inside the pack line kind of depends on where your man is. You know, it's, it's, it's really – it's something that hopefully they've been taught at a, at a younger level, but it's definitely something you can have if, you, if you're a county school or you've got a traditional feeder. It's something that it's really easy. Like, this is one of the things that you can tell your middle school coach that we really want our kids, uh, you know, doing. But it's, you know, it's halfway between ball and man, so it's real simple. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple, you know, concept. It's simple enough to understand. Um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, if the ball is, if the ball is kind of over here, okay, and you're, you're on, you know, you're on this guy, and, you know, uh, this is my man, I want to be halfway between, okay? But I want to, you know, one terminology piece we use is we talk about, uh, you know, being in a shallow V. And so we talk about, you know, we want to be below these guys. We don't want to be up here. You know, we want to be in a shallow V. Okay. So a lot of people say triangles. We just kind of talk about, you know, being in that shallow V. And so they kind of can visualize it. Um, they can kind of see it and think about it that way. But we just talk about, you know, are you shallow? So not only are we in our V, uh, you know, halfway between ball and man, you know, when you're just when you're with your young guys, even with your older guys, you can talk about having our pistols out. You know, I think that helps some, but we'll get into gap coverage and help and all that later. But um, those are some things that, that are big idea stuff. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is contain the basketball, make them take tough twos. You know, at the college level, I think kids can make a little more tough twos. At our level, even some of the best kids, you, you know, you think about the best kids in your, in your region, the, you know, the top two or three kids, they can, they, you know, they, they're probably there because they can make some tough twos. You know, but when your season's on the line, can they make enough of them to beat you? Um, you know, I, we're going to find out. So we'd much rather give up those tough twos than, than anything else. And then, um, so two big things that go into that with making teams take tough twos is you better be good at post defense. So we spend a lot of time on working on our post defense, um, and we talk about not fouling. So all this stuff is, is useless if you foul a bunch. Um, and so, you know, we talk a lot about not fouling. And we'll, I'll mention some things we – some specific things we do and say to keep kids from fouling, hopefully some. But, uh, but we definitely – you know, those are two things that go into making teams take tough twos. Uh, you know, and then the biggest thing, everybody I talk to that kind of has a hang-up about um, – that kind of has a hang-up about whether they want to run pack line or not, I think there's a big misconception. I think there's a big misconception that you give up a bunch of threes. And I kind of, I kind of get that. But, you know, in the same breath of air, uh, you know, we actually – I feel like we defend the three-point line and give up less threes than other people uh, because what ends up happening is you don't have to overhelp. And, you know, the, the open threes, the inside-out threes come when you're having to help or you're having to rotate, you know. Uh, Chuck Daly said, you know, it's not the help that gets you beat, it's a recovery. And, you know, we're always, I feel like, pretty early on the recovery because we just don't have to help. Uh, you know, and it, it, all, it all goes together when you start putting pieces together. Okay, if I keep the ball in front of me, there shouldn't have to be a bunch of help. You know, like we talk a lot about it being a team defense, but at the end of the day, you've got to win your individual matchup. If you make me help, this thing's going to break down. And so we really, 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 really want them to keep the ball in front of them. Um, you know, there's just, there's just not a lot. We just don't rotate. You know, rotating is the hardest thing to do in basketball. We don't work on it. Uh, it's, it just doesn't happen enough that I feel like we need to spend time to work on rotating. We just don't, we don't do it. Uh, you know, our kids say, well, what if this? I say, don't. There is no, there's no what. I don't have a plan B for that. Don't get B. And so they kind of buy into that. There's nothing to fall back on. Um, you know, we, we played South Laurel at the end of the year. They had just come off a game where they hit like 14 threes against Rock Castle County. And, I mean, they were a great three-point shooting team in every sense. Of, you know, they had four guys that could shoot it. They could all drive it well enough. And so you kind of – they were just really hard to guard from the three-point line. And we ended up – we blocked more threes than they, they hit. They hit two threes on us. You know, we just – we don't we, – nobody hit – I think five was the most threes that anybody hit on us all year. Um, you know, we just don't give up a lot of threes. And so I think that's a big myth that people – that kind of scares people away – from running pack line is that they're going to give up a bunch of threes. Uh, it's just, it's just not true. Um, I don't think so. That's the kind of big idea, big picture stuff. Um, you know, I, I think you, you've got to believe in what you're doing. You've got to really understand your why. I think that's the best way. Like, you know, and then at the end of the day, it's really not, you know, 
what you run is great, but getting your kids to believe that it's like the only way, you know, that's one thing that, you know, I, I've, I found that probably allows to have as much success as anything else. You know, we went from when I was in Murray, we had an entirely different type of kid than we've got at Butler. And a lot of people said, well, I guess you're going to run a different defense. I guess you're going to do this. And I said, not really. I, we, you know, we were the number one team in the state in points per game allowed at Murray last year and number one this year at Butler. And it didn't matter what kind of kid we had. You know, any kid can play this. And, hey, if you're more athletic, then I think you can be even better at it. Um, you know, that's just kind of part of it. I, I think, like I said, anybody can play the style and win. Um, all right, so we'll go to the first kind of point here. Uh, we've had some people jump in in the last little bit here. Guys, if you have any questions along the way, by all means, unmute yourself, holler at me. You know, we'll talk about anything. Um, so don't, you know, don't be afraid to either message in the chat or to unmute yourself and holler if you have any questions. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to the first point, uh, you know, guarding the basketball. Uh, you know, the ball scores. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about guarding the basketball. I will say, you know, another overarching thing that, you know, I don't want to lose sight of. I think a part of the reason our defense is pretty good is we watch a lot of film. And this is one thing uh, when I was head coach uh, at my first school, I didn't do a lot of. And, but I had to spend so much more time on the defensive end. I didn't get to do a lot offensively that I wanted to do. Well, uh, after working with Tim Riley, the ones were Catholic, and I saw how much film they watched, I will never not do it again. We watch film four to five times a week, whether it's for 15 minutes or 25 minutes. We probably don't go much longer than 25 would be a really long film session. But, you know, it's, it's the best way to show them when things broke down, why they broke down. Okay, you thought you were in help, you weren't. You thought you were not, you did get beat off the drive. And it's just, it kind of backs up everything you're saying. Um, and it, it, it will, you know, you can use it for a bunch of ways. You can use it to inspire your team. You can do it to, you know, motivate, all that good stuff. So um, I, I just, I, I, the biggest thing that I changed as I think I've gotten a little bit older is um, we just watch a ton of film. And that helps with all this stuff. But uh, guarding the basketball, so with us, our absolute number one priority is to keep the ball in front of you. If, if I had, you know, if I had 20 minutes to take a team to prepare to play just another random team, I think I'd spend all 20 minutes just telling the people, keep the ball in front of you. Everything else, we'll figure it out. Um, you know, I, I don't care. You know, a lot of people say, do you want to send middle? Do you want to send baseline? I, no, I don't. I don't. I just want to keep it in front of me. If I can keep it in front of me, I can keep, I can keep us out of rotations. I can keep us out of help. I can keep us from having to recover. And we can make teams take a pull-up jump shot. And if you can make enough pull-up jump shots on us to beat us, good for you. Good for, nobody's working on 15-foot pull-ups. Everybody's telling their kids, hey, it's three point, is it's threes, laps, or free throws. And there's some teams that only take threes, laps, and free throws. Well, we're not gonna, we're gonna try really hard not to give you any of those. And, and so um, teams are gonna struggle a little bit. But, you know, we should be able to ask our kids, you know, what is the most important thing? And we stop and we do this a lot. Again, just to drive home, you know, just to drive home our points. A sign on the wall is not gonna do it. You know, a sign on the wall is just not – I can't remember what the signs were on the walls in my gym when I was a high school player, but I remember, you know, I remember I remember which hand to deny with, what line we were supposed to be on, which way to turn my head, the stuff that was taught and pounded in us, I can still remember, but the signs on a wall don't mean much. And so we, we tell our kids we have a pecking order. You know, if you, the number one most important thing, keep the ball in front of you. If you can't keep it in front of you, we, I don't know what to tell you. And so you've got to give them a green light a little bit to, you know, you're going to have to understand that, hey, if they've got, if they're a little too far back, that's what we'll work on. You know, we can always move you up a little bit. But once you're too far up, it's, it's over. So the number one thing is keep it in front of you. Number two for us, and I'll talk a little bit about this in just a second, we send everybody left. And it's a little unorthodox. Uh, obviously, if they're left-handed, we'll send them right. <clears throat> that's a key thing on a scouting report. We'll always talk about one of the, one of the three things that, We'll always be on a scouting report if a kid's left-handed because that's really important. Uh, but we keep – number one, keep the ball in front of you. Number two, keep it in front of you, but keep them going left. So we want them going left. And then number three is do not foul. Don't foul. Do those three things. Keep it in front of you, keep them going left, and don't foul. Because if you do those things, you know, like even if they do shoot a pull-up jumper, well, now the difference in a right-handed kid having to take that dribble to their left is they're dribbling left, and then they're bringing the ball back up into their jump shot. 
Kids are a lot more – if you watch a kid just naturally get loose, they're going to take their strong hand, boom, one dribble pull-up. They, they much rather prefer going with their strong hand into their pull-ups. So if they're going to shoot a pull-up, let's make sure they shoot it going with their left hand into their pull-up jumper. So even if they do take a tough two, it's probably their first dribbles with their left hand. So um, th those are all, you know, that, those are all the big things. And once you get good at keeping people to their, to their offhand, you know, they, they may overpenetrate, and then you just got to really, really, really buy into not fouling uh, because they're probably not going to finish. I mean, they're, they're just probably not. So kind of delving into that sending kids to their offhand thing. Um, I don't know that you can get away with this in college at the same level you can with us. I think you can probably get away with it some, uh, but I think you can just you can you can get away with murder at our level, uh, keeping kids going left. And and here's you know here's the thing, uh, I, you know it was kids in the first region, the ninth region, the seventh region. I don't care how good they are. There, there's I mean there's one kid per region that can probably go both ways really well. Um, how many kids do you have in your program? And you guys all have coached really, really, really good players. How many can go finish with their strong hand through contact consistently? So if you think about that, how many kids have I had over the years? If you've coached five, you've, you're doing great. That can go in there with their strong hand through contact and put someone in the basket. There's not many of those kids. If you've had five of those, you probably had maybe one that can go to their offhand, put someone in the basket through contact. And there are some, but they're few and far between. So there's so few kids that can go and finish through contact with their offhand. Um, they will not pass with their left hand, okay? Kids will not pass with their offhand. So if we're making them go left, if they're dribbling to the left and they want to pass left, they're going to bring it back to their right hand and they're going to pass across their body, okay? I helped with the all-star tryouts a couple years ago uh, when like Sagan and some of them guys were, uh, and Macy Turley and those guys were all, seniors and I watched and we had a drill where they just you know they would dribble right and pass to the corner for a corner three then they would dribble left and pass and this is with no defense on them dribble left and pass them up and there were two kids in that whole tryout and these are the best kids in the state of Kentucky there were two kids in that whole tryout who drove left and then passed with their left hand to those shooters so if the best kids in the state of Kentucky and one of them was left hand one of them was second she's left handed so you know if the best kids in the state of Kentucky are not going to pass with their offhand, then we want them going that way. And so what happens is it's just a little slower. And when you, you know, it's, it's a few, it's a second difference of them having to pass across their body. It allows like our kids, if, and this is where if you have a little bit more athleticism, if you want to, tell, if you have a kid that can, that can read that stuff, maybe they can pick that up and they can maybe get in the passing lane a little bit when kids go to pass across their body, if they can read that. But um, you know, the kids aren't going to finish left. They're definitely not going to pass with their offhand, uh, you know. And, you know, with some kids, if they're just super, super bad with their offhand, and, you know, we, we've, we see these kids, if they're just really bad, then we may get all up in them and just dare them to go and either try to create a turnover or literally make that kid go – just go out of control and just throw it off the backboard and, and don't foul that kid. Um, so that's, that's the reasons that we do that. Um, again, that's not, that's not true pack line. Okay. True pack line is going to tell you no baseline. Okay. They're going to say no baseline because they high side three quarter of the post and there's no help there. So that, that's, that's the fun, but so that's unique to us. All that being said, um, there are some kids that we will not send left. Okay. So a kid like, um, a kid like, uh, Taziah Jinx from Mercy uh, we, we never sent her left because uh, even though she was right-handed, she could go left and get in there and get into our body and draw contact extremely well. Or she was a kid who could go left and finish with the right hand and just she had a way about her. So we, we, we really, you know, and the more if you see a kid a couple times, you may get that sense. If you see it in film, you may get that sense that, hey, you know, maybe we don't need to really send this kid left because they're beating us in a straight line when we try to send them left. And so when we get those kids, like with a jinx, what we do is we just say, hey, it's, it's dead in front of you. It's knees to knees. It's shoulder to shoulder. Keep that kid in front of you at all costs. And it makes it easy if they're a driver, if they're not a really good shooter, it makes it a lot easier. Um, but, but that's just a teaching point that we talk that I think helps them. Hey, if we're not sending left, uh, it's knee to knee. It's shoulder to shoulder. I just want to keep all of you in front of all of me. And 
Um, that's kind of the adjustment we'll make with some of those kids that really can go left and finish left really well. <clears throat> the next point on there, uh, bother the ball. You know, this is one thing when I first started, you know, we didn't put any pressure on the ball at all. I mean, we stayed away from you a, a good distance. And, uh, you know, teams thought we were running zone a lot, so they'd run their zone offense. Um, you know, but uh, I don't think you can – I don't know that you can win at the highest level um, doing that. And so the adjustment we've made is, uh, you know, if we're not going to overpressure, and, and we're not for the most part sometimes, and we're not going to overpressure for the most part. And so one teaching point, and we, we say this a lot, we work on this, um, we talk about bother the ball, okay? You don't have, like, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be all up in someone to be bothering them, okay? And so they, I think by using the term bother the ball, it's not pressure, it's not, hey, get up in them, but it's, hey, I, I do have to have some activity, I've got to bother it. And that's really all you have to do. All you have to do is bother the basketball. I'm going to show a uh, I'm going to show a clip of of kind of what um, what that would look like I guess uh, because I do think that stuff helps. Okay, and so uh, just a, a few things here, you know, like we, we you may want to show some token pressure. So like we're playing South Laurel here and we don't want them to get ahead of steam. So we don't want to be sitting back in our pack and let them get ahead of steam. Uh, Mercy is the same way. If you let Mercy get downhill, they're just going to get too deep on you before you can really pick them up. So we may pick them up, but you'll notice we're going to start retreating really early. Uh, that is enough. You know, we may stun at you, but we're not going to let you get ahead of steam. Okay. And so all we want to do is, you know, we just want to bother the ball. We want to keep it, you know, we want to keep her in front of us. We want to keep her going left. Okay, and we just want to bother the basketball. We just want hands around the basketball um, and keep it in front of us. This is a really good job. Okay, so we wanted to deny this girl, and so everybody else is doing their jobs, and we're we're denying this girl. Okay, but once she gets it, now we're you know we're away from her, and again we're going to keep her in front of us. And this girl just does a really good job of. I mean, you can see the distance she has here, so she's not really that close to this girl, but she's going to bother the ball and she's going to bother her vision. So she's constantly just trying to keep her hands active and keep somebody in front of her. And you just, that, that's a late, late closeout. I mean, that's, you know, Colette, she's a really good shooter. Um, there's no help. It's a late closeout. Uh, you know, but I think the thing is just really, uh, we're not going to, we don't have to get up in you to bother the basketball. And this is enough to deter a post entry pass. Uh, it's enough to bother you enough to where you can't really get anything going. <clears throat> and so, you know, we, and we, we just talk about that activity a lot. Um, we try to show that activity a lot. We, you know, and we work and shell a ton on bothering the ball. And it's just the terminology piece I like. Uh, it's, it's in lieu of just a crazy amount of pressure. You know, kids nowadays, I think the game has evolved. Uh, you know, if a kid goes and works with a trainer, 90, like 90% 90 of what they're doing is ball handling, dribble moves. I mean, that's, they're, they're going to be dribble. Kids can dribble the piss out of it. My center's are out there and can do these ball handling drills. And if you overpressure them, you know, they can dribble in a straight line and they can go make layups. And I think kids just, they, they, they dribble it so well. Um, teams run so much dribble drive or they run dribble penetration oriented offenses uh, that if you overpressure the basketball, it's the quickest way to get beat in a straight line. If you get beat in a straight line, you're either rotating or you're giving up straight line drive layups. And either one of those aren't good. So I just don't think you have to overpressure the ball. And then the other thing is teams aren't patient. Okay, they're not patient. I mean, we, we, we go back and we look and we go, okay, you know, is this team moving the ball side to side on us? And the answer is almost no. I mean, it's no. You know, it's, it's one or two sides of the floor at most, and then there, somebody's going to go take a bad shot. So, um, you know, we don't worry about teams holding the ball for a very long time either. <clears throat> so one thing to think about when you're, when you're talking about how much pressure to apply. Uh, you know, and this is like so early. If, if this is something you're implementing early on, you know, early on, we don't like this is like towards the end or like at the end of October or whatever. <clears throat> uh, you know, early on, we just want to make sure that they're keeping it in front of them, they're sending left and they're not fouling. But as we get into it, we want them to start recognize your matchup. Okay. So recognize your matchup. Uh, you know, like Bullet East played four pretty much 
five guards the majority of the game. And uh, so it would put us in some bad matchups. But you, you still got to look at it and go, okay, who am I? How much ball pressure can I reasonably put on you without getting beat in a straight line? And that's how much ball pressure I want to put. If we end up getting, you know, if we and, and we've got a little, we've got a girl who's a ball hawk, okay? She's 5'4", uh, you know, she can't get the cereal off the fridge, but she can get into basketball like crazy. And we don't want to take that away from her. And so that kid, we say a reasonable amount of ball pressure for you is as much as you can get up there and get in her. Uh, you know, she held uh, Savori to zero field goals the first time we played her and like 12 points in two games. And she was able to get up in her and turn her as much. And we, we never had to rotate. We never had to overhelp. So if you've got a kid, you don't have to take that away from them. You don't have to, you know, if you've got a kid that can zigzag someone and never get beat, by all means, get up in her. And, but it's, it's, it's you got to know you and you got to know them. And so this is where film is important. And we, so we'll do, a, and I'll show you a, a drill we do, a shell rotation drill we do that will constantly work on them understanding how much ball pressure to put. And we've got a coach at each line that's kind of coaching them through that, hey, a little more, a little more, a little less, back up, back up. But, you know, they'll be able to recognize it against their teammates first. And then if they can do that, then, you, you know, you may be able to start getting them to recognize their opponents. You know, one thing, we don't switch. Uh, we don't switch at all. Um, and, you know, that helps with personnel and really helps with them knowing their matchups. But we make every kid know about two or three players that they may have to guard and how much ball pressure they need to be putting on that kid. And that'll be, a, you know, a big prep, prep type thing. Um, so uh, we do a drill. Uh, you know, we do a lot out of shell. Um, and so what will happen is we'll have our four offensive guys and we've got, our four, we've got our defensive guys in here touching. We start everything on a closeout, so a coach is going to have a ball down here on the baseline. We make them start touching, uh, touching hands. Everybody's got a hand in there. And then we throw it out, and then, all right, we're starting. So a coach is going to throw it out, whatever. So when we first start with this, you know, all we're going to do is we're going to be stationary. Um, we're going to be stationary, and all we're saying is, hey, you know, contain it and send it left. So we're making sure that from every spot, this kid is giving me an early closeout and they're sending left. This kid's doing the same, okay? So coach throws it out. They stay active. They bother, you know, they stay active. They're bothering the ball. On the whistle, okay, or on the whistle, or if you're not a whistle guy, maybe you'll change. They all run in, they touch hands, and then they go to the next guy. So if I went to the corner guy first, change, whistle, whatever, we come in, we touch hands again, we go out. Change, we come in, we touch hands, we go out. And so what happens is you've got to work on, you know, you got to, you should have early closeouts, but you got to work on sending left from here, sending left from here, sending left from here. And then, uh, you know, and then we've got coaches stationed, uh, as if, depending on how many you got, we got coaches stationed at every spot and they're talking our kids through it. Hey, right. You know, Hey, you know, a, you know, a little more ball pressure, a little left, you know, Hey, make sure you're sending left, make sure you're closed out. One thing I should have mentioned and early on, like really all we're looking at for us is, is your close out early so that you're not going to get beat? So is your close out early? And, um, you know, when you send left, the, the dangerous thing you get into is you want to send left, but you don't want to give left. And that's, a, you know, that's one thing we say a lot. Send left, don't give left. Okay? Because, if, if, you know, if we're just constantly, hey, send them left, send them left, what happens is our kids will open up. And, like, yeah, they may be going left, but we're opened up so far like this, you know, that, that's given left. Uh, that's not uh, – yeah, we're going to be four on four on this drill, and we usually will have three teams. So we'll try to go, like, red, white, blue, um, whatever our – you know, whatever it is, we're going to go four on four uh, just to keep – so we can see everybody and, um, you know, and then we'll just kind of go offense, defense, defense out. But, um, but that, that's giving. And even bad kids, what will happen is they'll take one dribble with their left hand and go back to the right and go shoot right hand layup. So we don't want to give left, but we do, want to, we do want to send left. And that's a big thing. And so our coaches are constantly watching. Like, so like this, we would say you're too open. So a coach is going to say, close it up, close it up. So instead of coming out like this, where they were really open, they're going to be more like this, okay, where they're closed up a little bit and they're sending left instead of giving left. And that is huge in the early portion of teaching that, you know, of teaching is knowing the difference. And we correct every single time. And I give my coaches the green light to stop practice. And, you know, especially if it's more than one kid that's doing it and really teach. 
and just tell them, guys, you know, we're quick about it. Guys, look, this is what we're looking for on your closeouts, you're, but you're, you're just too far open and we're going to give up straight lines. So um, it's just a huge, huge piece that I should have mentioned when I talked about send and left is definitely send and not give. Um, okay, so we'll do that. We'll do that to start the shell drill or especially early in practice. Hey, are they, are they in a good spot? Are they not too open? Is it a good early closeout? Okay, then maybe we add, all right, first time through we do that. Next time, all right, hey, and we're just, it's stationary. Next time it's, all right, now this time we're, we're, we're adding bottom of the ball. This time offense, you, like, so and now this time we might roll a ball out to everybody. So we might have these guys roll a ball out and then, or we might just say imaginary ball. And so this time the offense is going to have the ball and they're going to be moving it around. So now they've got to bother the ball and still send left. You know, don't get caught up into getting sucked up in them on a jab step. Don't get caught up into shifting your hips. Stay level, keep them left, and bother the ball. And so we'll add bother the ball to this piece. Okay, we feel like we're starting to get it. Maybe we're the second week into practice, and now we say, all right, we're doing shell rotations. We're sending left. We're keeping in front of us. We're bothering the ball. And this time, we want you to know your matchup. So they're going to be guarding a guard, a post, you know, a post, a guard. And depending on what they are, hey, if you're a guard and you get out there on a post, get all up in them. I mean, you can't put too much pressure if that's your matchup. So now they're having to think a little bit. And uh, it's, it's really, you know, it, it, that piece, you know, you, you think it sounds simple, but it takes them a little bit to where they can really understand how to adjust the amount of ball pressure. And, uh, but, but after a week, two weeks, they really got this. So what this evolves into and what we end up doing, uh, especially in November and then pretty much through the year, when we get into shell rotations is we'll say, okay, um, you know, this is where the competitive part comes in. We put 20 seconds on the clock. I've got a manager or a coach. If we don't have a manager there, we've got a coach on the clock and we constantly keep refreshing a 20 second shot clock. And we tell the, you know, we tell the offense, look, offense, you're going to be on offense for four possessions here. You've got 20 seconds, okay? And uh, you're going to, like, so defense, the first possession, you've got to guard this guy. Second possession, you've got to guard this guy. Third possession, so you're going to have to guard all four guys in, the, in this little drill. And um, so we score it. What we do is the offense, you know, defense, you're just trying to keep them from scoring. Offensively, we give them one point for a paint touch. Uh, so we give them one point for a paint touch. We give them three points if they score in the paint. So if you score in the paint, you get three points. If you just get the ball two feet in the paint, whether the drive or the pass or whatever, you get two points. Uh, and then if you hit a three, you get two points. You know, that may be why we're the worst three-point shooting team in the country. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, we, we're going to get threes kind of whenever. So that, that's how we score it. And what, you know, depending on what's important to you, what you're not doing well, you can always change your scoring system. <clears throat> you know, if, if you're, you know, if you're giving up too many offensive rebounds, you know, you can give, you know, hey, two, you know, either, hey, you're going to get a whole net. If you get an offensive rebound, you get a whole nother 20 second possession or you get a point or whatever you want to do, how you want to give them credit for an offensive rebound. All of that's up to you. Um, you know, but they love it. They love when it's competitive. Um, and, and, you know, we, it, it allows us to see them in a lot of different situations. So we'll do this a lot. And then what we tell our kids is, look, if you can guard for 20 seconds, if you can keep us, you know, if you can keep us out of the paint for 20 seconds, then you're going to be able to do it against anybody because that is about how long it's, it's 20 seconds or less is going to be what team's possessions are. I mean, just really and truly most possessions, most games, the other teams on offense for 20 seconds or less. And so we don't make them guard much longer than that. So that is the um, – that is kind of our go-to bread and butter drill um, that we do that uh, – we do that with. Does anybody have any questions about guarding the basketball or anything or questions about the drill or anything? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to closeouts. <clears throat> um, you know, when, when we start to get beat on – when we start to get beat on drives, the first place we look is closeouts. You know, in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, on, I looked on our, on our stats and huddle, and we gave up, you know, more points in the fourth quarter than we did the whole game. The, the whole game. Uh, and it's, it's – I think a lot of it is we start breaking down a little bit, and our closeouts break down first and foremost. And 
uh, you know, it's coach speak to say, oh, we do this every day in practice. We work on this every day. I promise you, we, there's not a day that goes by. We don't, you know, we may not say, okay, this is a closeout drill. We will mention closeouts and how we do it every single day, every single day. We, we will not go down with that. I think it's the number one thing that separates the elite defensive teams from even the really good ones. You know, the really good ones are going to close out most of the time and close out the right way to the personnel. The elite teams are going to close out the whole game and they're going to do it to the right personnel and all that. So, um, you know, every drill we do, especially like you're talking shell drills, you're talking a zigzag drill, um, any drill that it's applicable, we will start out, um, you know, hey, we're closing out uh, and we're closing out left. Okay, so this drill, we, got, we roll the balls out, you know, we get a, we get a close out, we get a, and we send them left. You know, if you're not a – if maybe it's send baseline, then do it that way. If you send middle, do it that way. If you want to send neither, do it that way. But we send left, so we send every drill with an early closeout, and you send left. Um, and it's just – it's we just do it nonstop. Uh, it's real – like, one thing that we tell our kids, it's be early, not late. If you're going to make a mistake, make the mistake that you closed out way too early rather than way too late. If you close out too early, you're still a rebounder, you know, if they shot fake and drive, you're still in the play. If you close out too late, you, you, you're, use, like, you're useless to us. And so we, we don't want to close out late, the exception being if they're a shooter. <clears throat> uh, if, they're, if they're just an elite shooter, then, one, we probably weren't helping a lot off of them anyway, and it's just a different, it's a different type of closeout. And, okay, and kind of getting into that, I think this is, this is one thing that I picked up from some people that I think is really good. Uh, with our closeouts, we have three types. Uh, we have three types of closeouts. We have, and I know some people, uh, you know, like we've got a closeout for a shooter only, for a driver only, and then just a regular guy. Uh, when I first heard somebody at a clinic say this, they were like, yeah, we call them Iverson closeouts, Reggie Miller closeouts, and something else. And my kids don't know who those guys are. Uh, you know, and with, with people continuing to change, instead of using individuals, and I get it, like, oh, Steph Curry, yeah, they know it's a shooter. Uh, but for us, how we do it is we say, okay, you, it, if they're a shooter, then they're hands. So we say they, they score with their hands, okay? So they're a shooter, they're hands. We call that a hands closeout. We try to use, like, one-syllable words because it's quick and easy. And so here's what happens. You know, like when we're playing Bullet East and they've got the Granado kid who's like just a sniper, but she can't dribble it real well, you know, or not to the level that we can't guard it. She's a hands closeout. And that's an easy thing for my kids to know, like, hey, guys, hands is coming in. And so when she comes in, every all five kids look at each other and they go, hands, hands, and they'll point to her. And so that's just like we're all on the same page. On the scouting report. When they get their scouting report, it's going to say if they're right-handed, if they're left-handed, that's going to be on there. If they're a certain type of closeout, that's going to be on there. So if this girl's a shooter, they're going to know right there, all right, this girl's hands. And I will quiz them. So if I see them in the hall, I give them their scouting reports a couple days in advance. You know, I see them in the hall, and I'm like, Drea, what number? they got two hands, guys. What numbers are they? 13 and, you know, 10. All right, great. And so they know I'm going to do that. And so they, they know who hand, they know who these, these guys are. So with our hands closeouts, you know, like they're going to stay a little tighter to their guy. Uh, they're still in the pack. So we're not going to abandon the pack. We're just not going to overhelp. And the closeout is super, super late. So we tell them, like, look, if you get beat on a drive by a, by a hands guy, so you, you go out there and they beat you on the drive and they go score off the dribble, that's on me. And I will, I will yell, I'll, I'll say it loud so they can hear it in the game. Like, and it happens. You know, they go out there, late close out, a hands kid beats them and shoots a layup. And I, I'll be loud. I'll say, my bad, my bad, guys. That's, that's on me. And that, like, gives them that green light to say, okay, you know, like, I'm going to keep doing it. Because if I don't, if I'm like, oh, what happened? What, how are you going to give up a layup? If I act like that, they're going to say, well, piss on you. I'm not going to get beat no more. And then they're going to shy away from what you're trying to do. So, if, if they make a mistake doing what we ask them to, you know, we're really vocal about, um, you know, we're really vocal about, um, about, Hey, it, it's our bad. If they if like, you know, when, a, so we've got hands closeouts. Okay. We've also got feet closeouts. So if they don't, if they can't shoot a lick, if they cannot shoot and I'm saying 20, 
you know, if they're like 26% or under, maybe even 27, depending on how good they are and we got to give up something, then we call those kids feet because they score with their feet, they're drivers. So we say feet. Okay. And, you know, again, that gives our kids the, you know, our kids know, like, it's just one word feet, feet, and they guys feet, you know, if they sub out, Hey, I had 12, she's feet. It just helps those kids remember that stuff from the scouting report um, to transition easily. And so we're not letting their best players get away with what they do best at any point in the game. Um, our feet closeouts are super, super, super early. And I am just beyond anal about feet and hand closeouts. Um, you know, the other one is going to be straight. If they are a little late, a little early, I'm not so crazy about the straight closeouts. But feet and hands, if they're not on it, like if they close out late and, they're, and it's, a, it's a feet closeout, I mean, I'm all over. And we don't let that stuff go because it is that important to us. Again, it's one of those things that keeps us out of rotations. It keeps other teams from doing what they do well. Uh, so we're really big about that. And – uh, you know, we, 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 this is something I started to change a little bit is we will have runoffs. So if a guy is like, if a guy is a straight cash shooter, uh, and we term, we use it cash C A S H that means catch and shoot. If they're a straight cash shooter, like if they're cash hands, we might run them off. Like if we know full well, that kid ain't dribbling. I mean, that kid's just not going to dribble, you know, or they're not going to go anywhere if they do, then we might run them off. Uh, you know, we, we blocked, you know, we blocked some threes this year, um, you know, and, uh, with, with some kids like this and, you know, they kind of led to some offense for us, but, um, that's one thing we've kind of changed a little bit is we'll allow a straight runoff. I mean, just run them off the line, run them off the line, get them super uncomfortable. And those kids usually like when you get your three, when somebody's running you off the line or you get a three blocked, it really messes with those kids heads, those cash hands players. Uh, one other thing about the hand stuff, you know, one thing is when, when you, when you, when someone's a shooter and they're subbing in or they're just out there and you go, guys, that's a shooter. That's a shooter. You know what that kid starts to think? Yeah. You know what? That's right. Coach. I am a shooter. You know what I'm saying? And you start giving them that confidence and I'm not trying to give those kids any confidence. You know, no one ever did that when I played, but I'm sure that if they started yelling like shooter, I'd have been all about it. You know, so we don't, we don't like to yell shooter and give them that confidence. So it's just one more thing that goes into that. Um, and then, then we close out with one hand. Some people are two hands. Some people are one. I don't, I'm not crazy about it, but I do think if you close out with two hands, I think you have more of a tendency to want to stand up and bite on shot fakes. Um, it could be the other way around. That's just us. So, I, you know, I, that's why I do it. Uh, you know, really – Closing out is a thing that, you know, you can do it out of your shell. You know, you can do it like, so we do, we'll do, uh, you know, we'll do shell transition and we'll do, you know, we'll do shell transition and we'll talk about, um, you know, we'll talk about, hey, you know, this guy's hands or this guy's feet. Or we might say, hey, play him like our personnel. So, hey, you know that Drea is feet. So close her out feet. We don't have a shooter, but if we did, we'd say, hey, that guy's hands. So close her out hands. Um, so we may make a line or we may say like, Hey, that guy's this, that guy's this, um, you know, but, uh, you know, one like early drill, we do a ton, we do it in conditioning, we do it in preseason. And anytime I feel like our closeouts are, are losing a little bit of their edge. We do this. I just call it three line closeouts and we literally just get them in three lines and they just, you know, line up behind those guys. We have three lines. I blow the whistle. They sprint to the free throw line and they close out. I blow the whistle, half court, I blow the whistle, free the line, I blow the whistle. The next line will go. So the first line, once the, on the second whistle, the first line's up here, the second line is at the free throw line. And, we, you know, we make them keep their feet moving. We make them pretend to bother the ball. And then, you know, if they piss me off pretty good, then I'll be a real jerk and I'll make them redo it. Every, you know, if one kid closes out late, you know, redo it. If one kid, and it can be one kid, and if I'm really, really pissed, at, nobody can mess up, and I'll just feel like making them do it again, and I'll say, you know, we're not closing out early enough. Let's go. Or if that's a point of emphasis that's been hurting us in, in games, you know, then, then I'll be a jerk about it. I'll make them keep redoing it. Um, so the first time, we'll just go, hey, straight closeouts. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Next, all right, so they go down and back. Next time, we're going, all right, this time we're going feet closeouts. All right, this time we're going hands closeouts. And so if it's a hands closeout, you better be almost running. Your closeout shouldn't start until you get right to that line. If there are feet closeout, your closeout better start down in here. 
And so you can see, and, and you can just have coaches at different lines. And again, they can be coaching them through this. You know, hey, you know, so and so, you know, dynasty, you know, you got to be early. Dynasty, later on your hands, close outs, whatever it is. So they're working on closing outs, sending them left. They're working on closing out based on what they are. And then sometimes I'll just mix it up. So I'll blow the whistle and I yell hands. You know, they get going. I blow the whistle feet. So then they got to kind of think on the fly. And, you know, again, you can incorporate that into any drill, but we do three line closeouts a lot. I like to do it, you know, and like I said, preseason, during the season. Uh, it's a simple one we do. Anybody have any questions on closeouts? Okay. <clears throat> uh, next thing is like gap help. Uh, one thing, a big teaching point is your position is your help. Okay. Your position is your help. So what we're trying to drive home by saying that and by talking about your position is your help is we don't want you jumping over and helping. Like where you are, if you're in the right place, then you don't have to come give help and then have to recover because no one can do that. Your position is your help. You better be in the right position. Okay, if you're in the right position, it's gonna be good help. So that's one thing we say is your position is your help. Um, you know, and we might give a small early stunt. And I mean small and I mean early. Okay, I'll show you a clip. I'll show you a clip of what this kind of looks like uh, when we do it well. Maybe it's this one. Maybe I didn't put it in here. Okay. Uh, so, again, you know, we're playing South Laurel. We don't want them to get ahead of steam. We just want to show some token pressure. So, you know, that girl guarding the ball – is that girl guarding the ball is like the best on ball defender I've ever coached, but I still don't want her, you know, <clears throat> so we give her a little leeway and you can see like your position is your help. Again, we're face guarding this girl. Okay. We're face guarding this girl. If the ball's above the elbow, we're kind of high side, but like we are in the gaps. So she does not have to rotate over here to help. Okay. Her position is her help. Well, crap. Uh, well, I didn't get that clip. I didn't clip that as long as I wanted to clip it, but, <clears throat> um, you know, like it, it, all you have to do to discourage a drive is just a short early stunt. And I mean, just a short, quick, early, uh, you know, one thing is we have a semi open stance. So we're going to like, we're going to have our butt close to the baseline. We're going to have our chest showing a little bit, you know, we may be a little closed off, but we want that ball handler to see our chest. And so if I feel like, you know, if I feel like our guy's getting beat a little bit, I'm only going to show, and I'm already pretty much on the way back to my guy. Okay. I'll go back to, um, yeah, I'll go back to that clip here in a second, but um, you know, it goes back. If you're, if you're on the ball, if you're not on the ball, you're in the pack. Okay. Your position is your help. You're halfway between you're in your shallow V. If you need to give a little help, you give a little help. But at the end of the day, your man is your responsibility. So, like, you, that, it all goes back to our number one rule. Like, if you ever have any question, like, why are we doing this? Or if you're trying to figure something out, like, should, should we do it this way? Should we do it this way? You've got to know your nose. For us, no getting beat off the dribble. That's our number one no. Our number one rule is don't get beat off the dribble. So, we're not going to overhelp. So, you know what? We're going to show a little bit of help, but I'm going back to my man. And if you get beat in a straight line, you go give up a layup, that's on you. Okay, because we're not going to give you a bunch of help. You, it, your, it was your job to keep your man in front of you. Obviously, if there's like a we, – we, we say if there's a blow-by. I mean, if they're just dead to rights, blow-by, then we'll rotate. But that's the only time we ever, ever, ever want to do that. Um, you know, if – and if you're guarding a, an elite shooter, especially a cash hands, you can be a little closer to them. So you don't necessarily have to be halfway between – you know, especially if you're one pass away. If you're one pass away and you're guarding a shooter, you may want to be a little closer to your guy uh, if they're a cash hands guy. Um, you know, help the help. I think that goes without saying um, what we mean by help the help. But I do kind of want to uh, – I do kind of want to –
All right. Okay. So I do want to show this because I think it's, it covers a lot of things about gap help and all that. So, um, okay. You can see, so again, you know, like our girl's in the gap. She's going to give a little help, a little show. That's probably too much, but you can see where she's already headed. Okay. She's already headed to her guy. So she was the help. And this, I mean, all these guys are shooters, so they're all hands. And this is the guy who's helping the help. So you can see she is kind of showing, she's in her shallow V and she's showing her chest. Okay. So this girl is not really encouraged to want to drive so much. Now she's guarding hands. If this was feet, she'd be probably like down in here as just a, a big, big, big time helper. But because this is hands, she's guarding. I mean, this girl's cash hands. She's going to be, you know, her positions are helping. She's not going to give much more. If this girl started to drive, she would give a show. If this girl doesn't start to drive, she doesn't even have to give a show. She can be there on the catch. But you can see she realizes, all right, she's arrived. I can stay in my gap and I don't have to overhelp. Okay. Again, we're face guarding this girl. Okay. She's taking a good angle not to get beat in a straight line. And then now, you know, we, again, like Colette's a, you know, we, we can't give much help off there. Um, we, you know, we want to keep the ball here, you know, here she's bothering the ball. So you could tell how far she's staying away, even on the drive. Now look at that. You know, that's, that was a really good one and it's kind of subtle, but I, you know, I hope you can see this girl right here. She's just an elite defender. <clears throat> she recognized, look at this one stunt. Okay. She knows she can't give much help off this girl going to Western Kentucky. So she's going to give a stunt. She shows her chest. She gives a stunt, but she knows this is my responsibility. So she is going to turn and run. I mean, she is turning and running. There's not a jump to the ball. I hate, I hate saying jump to the ball. If we're jumping to the ball, we're getting beat. So she is turning and sprinting. This girl, again, she is in, she is in her help. She, if this girl would have driven, she'd have been there. Okay, she is helping the help. We always have to be thinking about help the help. And you can see that's a, that's a, that's a runoff. I mean, that's not even a, there's no closeout. There's not supposed to be a closeout. That girl's a runoff, okay? And then you better box out if you want to be any good, okay? But so you can see when, when you piece it all together, you know, we're able to do a lot of different things and we're able to play personnel how we want to play it. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you, you may go, well, they're pressing. No, we're not. We're playing back line, you know? Uh, well, they're pressuring. No, we're denying this kid who we don't want to touch the ball. And, but at the end of the day, everybody's keeping the ball in front of them. Everybody's in their gaps. We're helping the help, and we're contesting three-point shots. And that's – I mean, that's a contested jumper. And then we're boxing out. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I really thought South Laurel was one of the best. Like, they're the most like a college team um, that we saw because their ability to, to spread you out, drive, and kick, and make threes. Um, you know, but that's kind of <clears> – <throat> that's kind of all of it in one – in one package. Um, I don't want to keep everybody too long. So, you know, we have a drill for that. We call it help the help, uh, or I'm sorry, we call it next pass drill. Uh, and it works on making the next pass and defending and being a help the helper. Uh, but um, I can get into all that. And then last uh, terminology piece to this, we talk about don't buddy run, okay? So when the ball gets swung, you've got to sprint the help. Uh, we, this is, we were really bad at this for a really long time. Uh, but okay. So if your man passes and cuts away, so like, let's say, you know, here's the ball and here's you and you know, they pass over here and they cut away our kids, all of them, 100%, they love to buddy run. Okay. It's a natural thing to do. So as this guy starts to cut out, your guy is probably going to just go right alongside him, just like their buddies. Okay. And we call that buddy running. If you buddy run out, what happens is you just open up a big driving lane in our middle. And guess what? We're sending left. So the really, really smart, the really, you know, the really smart coaches, they throw it over here with their best player, they clear us out, and then they try to attack us middle where there's a big old gap. Okay? 
So what we, what we constantly are working on, we're constantly talking about is we are constantly talking about sprint to help. So when they pass it over here, you've got to turn and sprint and sit down in your V. Turn and sprint and sit down in your shallow V. As that guy starts to cut away, you may go away with them a little bit, but you cannot buddy run. Kids like kids, they love to buddy run in the half court on a pass and cut away. They love to buddy run in transition. Watch your guy. Your guy is just like in your, your guy's mind is like, hey, my guy, I can't let my guy beat me back down the floor. So I'm going to run next to my guy, and that's buddy running. And so we talk about we, buddy running is never good unless you're face guard. Then you can buddy run them everywhere, okay? Uh, but, but sprinting to that help, we don't say jump to the ball. If you jump, you're going to be on your heels, you're going to be flat-footed, and you're going to be slow. We say sprint to it, sprint to the ball. If you need to throw your hand to get you sprinting, throw your hand to get over there, okay? I think you saw in that clip, our girl helps, and she turns, I mean, she's sprinting, okay? And we try to do the same thing with the gaps. And we're not, I mean, that's probably the hardest thing to do. I think it's the hardest thing to get our kids to do. <clears throat> but when we do, we secure our gaps. Like, it, it's, the, it's the best time to beat us is on a pass and drive behind a guy who's cutting away. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's what we have with the gap help stuff. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, you can stick around after and ask. You can ask now, whatever. But we'll move on to post defense. Uh, you know, I'm really big on this because – we struggle to guard the post at times if we don't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, I will say, like, overall, we spend more time on offense than we do defense. Now, we talk about defense more probably. We emphasize it, but we spend more time and practice on offense. Uh, post D, like, um, the big picture here for us is balls above the elbow, three quarters. As soon as the ball gets near the elbow, as soon as it gets near the elbow, we want to get on the low side. And I think most, most teams don't do this, and I think when post players score the most, when they throw it in there, they score the most not off of an up and under, not off of a baby hook. They usually score because their man got stuck on the high side, they sealed you out, and they threw it in there, and they just lay it right in. And I can't stand – I just I, – again, this all goes back into we can't give up – it's our identity. We cannot give up an easy two. We'll all get – every one of us are going to get pissed off if somebody just gets a layup on us. So, we're going we're gonna to high side, but if it even gets close to the elbow, once it gets close to the elbow, get to that low side. And there's a few reasons for that. One, kids don't score middle going extremely well. Um, you know, kids don't score extremely well um, going to the middle. And so, uh, we, we want to send that way. But then at the end of the day, the biggest thing is we trap the post. Uh, we trap the post almost all the time, unless they've just got an elite shooter or, I mean, an elite passer out of the post, which most, most people don't have. <clears throat> We're trapping the post. Okay, so let's say we call it X, all right? Um, like, we're going to say, hey, we're Xing out the post. We don't call it that, um, you know, but I've got to try to beat you, most of you guys, so I don't want to tell you everything, but, um, like, let's say we're Xing out the post, okay? Well, we have a specific guy who's going to be our X guy, okay? So your worst shooter is who we're going to X off of, okay? So whoever your worst – like every, some people are different. Some people trap off lowest and closest. We're going to trap off your worst shooter. <clears throat> and then the big thing is we're not going to rotate back to that guy. So if you're the X guy, you've got to be able to trap the post and you've got to be able to recover back out to that shooter. But, but, it's, but they're not a shooter, so we don't really have to worry about it. And so it's been really, really good to us. You know, if you trap lowest and closest, you might give up a layup. You know, there, there's a good chance they're going to, like a, teams that know you're doing it, they're going to sneak somebody behind you and get a layup in there. It, you know, what we give up is your worst shooter catches it outside the three-point line. Okay. You know, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, and so the hardest thing is to keep your kids from rotating. You know, but we keep telling our kids, look, we're leaving this guy for a reason. Leave him. You know, what will happen early on when you're drilling it is, you know, you'll, you'll X off the right guy. You'll be there. Everything will be great. And then your kid will rotate off the best shooter they have to go guard that guy. And you're like, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? If you're playing a team that has four shooters, Bullet East, okay, South Laurel, hard to guard. They've got four shooters. They don't have anybody that you can just kind of dork, so to speak. In that, in that case, then we will rotate. Then we'll try to rotate. We'll have a guy who picks up two. Okay, I'll show you uh, one quick clip. 
of what it looks like when we X the post. Okay, so Bullet East, uh, I don't know if you saw him play. They've got a girl who's about 6'11". And she is hard to handle. And I'm telling you, she's not just hard to handle, she's impossible to handle if you let her go to the baseline. And I mean impossible. And so we're on the high side, but once the ball gets anywhere near the elbow, you're going to see her fighting, fight, fight, fight to get to the low side. Okay, we want this girl to come back we want this girl to come back, all right? Now, so, you know, like, this is a really good job here. She's bothering the ball, so it makes it a, a, a wide – it makes it a not great post-entry. She should not – this was a mistake. She should not have left this girl. It was not her double, okay? So, it's this girl's double. So, she's supposed to be there on the catch. And, I mean, we're going for the steal. So this is one of the few instances where super aggressive is we tell our kids all over the ball. So these two should be in it. Now, with a Bullet East, uh, with, you know, with Bullet East, with a South Laurel, with, in, at the college level, you know, somebody's got to take two. So right now, we know, you know, going into this game, all right, we're going to be leaving a shooter. You're going to have to get both. Okay, so she's just going to watch her shoulders. Like you can see her watching the shoulders, and then she's going to go pick that up. And then we'll rotate out of that. Okay. Um, so uh, that's kind of that's kind of what we're uh, you know that's kind of what we're our mo when we're talking about trapping the post. If that had been a non-shooter, you know, if that had been a non-shooter, then we would not have bothered trapping it. Okay. Like we wouldn't have bothered trapping it. Um, or I'm sorry, we wouldn't have left them. One other. Uh, Okay, one other clip. I think post defense is, you know, probably just as good showed maybe. Let me share the screen again. Okay, and so I'll show you with another group um, we've had. So this team had two post players and three really good shooters. So we didn't really want to trap off either guy. Okay, but you can see balls above the elbow, we're, we're on the high side. We don't want to allow a direct entry from the top, but as soon as it gets there, you can see we're fighting to the low side, okay? This is our X guy. So she's not going to run around. Like, if you're the X guy, you've got to have two – like, you got to have two eyes on, on the ball and you kind of watch, and are they going to throw it in there? So you can see she's not going to go fall in love with chasing her guy up here. She's staying to see if she doubles. We're on the low side, okay? Ball gets swung out. Okay, it's still, like I said, if it's even elbow extended a little bit, like here, well, I'm still all right with low side. Once it goes to the top, now we're fighting back high side. Okay, ball's really high, we're high side. You can see our X guy is constantly watching to see, you know, are they throwing it in here? Okay. She should be working to get to the low side, but she sees the ball is going away. Not getting too close at all. If she throws it in there, I'm still doubling. I'm the X guy. So even if my guy has the ball and they throw it in there, I'm the X guy. Okay? So you see these posts constantly fighting to get to the low side. Okay? And now these they had two posts, so either post was the X guy. So you can see what she's looking at. Right? And, like, that, that makes them really want to stop throwing a ball in there, okay? So, again, our posts are constantly fighting high side to low side, high side to low side. X guy has two eyes on the ball handler. And we tell them, if they – you know, if you see it coming from a mile, you can go steal it, okay? So, that's a good, uh, that's a good kind of look at our post defense. Um, you know, it's, it's not too much more than that. I will say the one thing with post defense, um, you know, the one thing with post defense – is uh you know you gotta live like you know you gotta live with some you know if the other team has a really really good post player you know it just it, it does make life tough um you know it does make life tough but <clears throat> the last piece to kind of post defense 
that I'll talk about is wallops. Okay. And uh, this, it is for posts, but it's also for guards. Um, we're really, really big on wallops. Um, <clears throat> you know, what we tell our kids in the post is, you know, first of all, you know, first of all, uh, we don't want it in there. Once it goes in there, okay, and they still have their dribble. So if their dribble is still live, okay, and they're liable to make a dribble, we kind of want them in, in what we call a boxer stance, okay? And so I got this from, like, Chris Mack. You know, we want them kind of down right here in a boxer stance, ready to kind of absorb that um, and, and ready for them to take that dribble. Okay, we want them down there so they can absorb the dribble. But as soon as a post player picks their dribble up, okay, or maybe even, uh, you know, or even a guard. A guard's driving and they pick their dribble up. We want to wall up. Okay, and so wall up is twofold. We want to wall up and walk through. Okay, we want so what happens is, uh, and we, we spend a decent amount of time teaching this because it's that important to us. Uh, but once they pick their dribble up, I mean, I want to make an H of myself. So my thumbs are in my ears, I'm down, I'm strong, and, and, and I'm just like I'm an H, right? Like I'm not here, I'm an H. Okay, and so I'm walling up, and what I want to do is I want to wall up your pivot foot. Okay. What happens is when people get beat on an up and under, the ball is dead, they go for a fake, and then they're out of the picture. Well, we, we stay down. We stay down in our wall up, we split your pivot foot, and then we walk through it, okay? Like we will literally slowly like kind of inch to you and walk through your pivot foot. And if like you can kill people with your lower body. Rest don't call fouls. If you do this, it's a foul. Here you can murder them with your lower body. So we will walk through their pivot foot. And, I mean, it makes they have nowhere to go. OK, um, I'll show you one clip of a, of a good wall up. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, this is and I'll show you the drill we do. I think that seeing the drill will probably be as beneficial as anything else uh, when it comes to those wall ups. OK. All right, so again, we don't want it in there. Once it does get in there, though, you know, like we tried to double, uh, but at the end of the day, you can see like our, her, our hands are straight up, okay? Our body is on them, and she is right now, she is trying to actually walk. You see her gaining ground. So she is trying to walk through, and you can see, I mean, we are chest to chest. I mean, we're on her. We are walking through her. We're walled up, so we're not fouling. <clears throat> you know, this is awesome post-defense. We will live with this. It's just better offense. You know, if they've got a kid, if they've got a kid that's as good, uh, that kid's really good. I mean, she's really good. And you just kind of got to live with that. But there's very few kids that when you get that, when you put your chest on them, you're walking through them, you're walling up, uh, they're going to make it happen. And, you know, it, we work on it in the post with the post. We work on it on the outside with our guards as well. And our kids, they, they you know, they laugh at first and they're like, oh, this is weird. I don't want to do this. Okay. Uh, but eventually they realize once they do it a couple times and they see what it's like to have it done to them, they really ha they hate it and they recognize this is, this is pretty good, okay? And so when we do our wall-up drills, I like to do it when we go post guard breakdown, okay? But our first wall-up drills, let's say with our posts, okay? So with the posts down here, we're going to have post player here, post player here, and the post player who's in the drill is right here, okay? Coach is at the top with the basketball. Coach is going to throw it down here to this guy, okay? So the first time we do this, when we're introducing it, we don't want to put too much on him at first, okay? When we first introduce it, we tell them, all right, guys, ball's dead. No one's got a dribble, okay? No one has a dribble. Ball's dead. So they'll come over here, and they'll wall this guy up. Offense tries to pivot. You know, you just tell the offense, hey, try to pivot. Go like you're going up and under. So this guy's going to wall up and walk through, okay? This guy, after about two seconds, they're going to throw it back to the coach. Then the coach is going to throw it over here to this guy. They're going to sprint over here, wall up and walk through, wall up, walk through. Then on the third time back, so they'll, that guy throws it back to the coach. Once it gets back down there, on the third time back, we're live. We're live, and we tell the guy, you can score, but you don't get any dribbles. Your ball is still dead. So the, the third time back, this guy's trying to score, and this guy's walling up and walking through. And as a coach, I know not to throw it in there until she can arrive right on time. 
And so what happens is you're, you get a lot of reps closing out, not lean and not fouling, and they get used to walking through their pivot foot. So they figure out which one's the pivot and they're walking through it. So the first time we do it, we're going to go, you know, we're three times where the ball's dead. Okay. So then once they start, once you feel like they got a handle on it, you set it up the same way. You let every kid get a rep. Then you set it up the same way. And you say, all right, this time offense, you get one dribble. You have to use it. So they throw the ball in there. Okay. They get one dribble. They're still not scoring. They get one dribble and then they pivot. So then now this guy's got to know, I can't just like, I can't, I can't just love up on them. Right. Like they're, they've got their dribble. So I'm down here in a boxer stance. My feet are active. I'm in a boxer stance. Once they pick that dribble up, now I'm in my wall up. Okay. And that's like a really, you know, that's a big teaching point is if they have, if they have their dribble, you, you're, you're not walling up. Okay. So once they pick their dribble up, pow, now I'm all up on them. I'm walking through. Ball goes back to the coach. It goes to the other post. Then they sprint over there. They early close out. Boxer stance. They're absorbing. They're absorbing. One dribble. Now we're walling up. Third time, it's straight up live. So offense, you get one dribble. You were trying to score. So just try to score. Defense, you're trying to get a stop by walling up. And then we end it with the rebound. So that's what we do with our posts. <clears throat> and they get a lot of repetition in a short amount of time. I mean, we, we will give like eight minutes to that. And they'll get a ton of reps with that. Okay, so with our guards, so that's what we do with our posts. With our guards, we'll have them uh, start from the perimeter. So we'll have our guards, you know, we'll have our guards appear on the perimeter. Um, and then they have the defensive guy. And so offense takes two dribbles, okay? Offense takes two dribbles. One, two, then they pick their dribble up. So then I have to guard the drive. Once they pick their dribble up, I'm walling up and I'm walking through. It's the same thing. I, once they pick their dribble up, I mean, they're dead to rights, and we can make them turn their back to the basket if we can walk through them. We can make them travel. You know, we got a lot of travel. We, we got a lot of travels called on the other team. Uh, because we're walking through their pivot foot. So they'll do two this way, and then we'll work it going to the baseline side because we should be sending left. So we go, we do defend two dribbles middle wall up, two dribbles baseline wall up. And, you know, and then we'll, do, we'll just mix it up, let them score. You know, hey, you get two dribbles to try to score. And so it, it just, they get a lot of reps in that. Um, and like I said, at first, you know, at first they're like, it's a little goofy. They, you know, oh, this is weird. But once they start figuring it out, they, they enjoy it and they do it well. Any questions about that stuff? All right, last, last part here, and I'll try to get through this. Uh, just odds and ends. So this is stuff that uh, I've picked up over the years. This is important stuff, I think, to know, but it doesn't fall into any of those big categories. Um, so what hurts it? I think it's good to know what hurts your, you know, what hurts your defense. And, um, you know, maybe, you know, like, maybe you only wanted to hear this so you could, you know, know this, but, hey, that's great, too. Uh, Great screening teams hurt pack line. So we, you know, like we can really, if you run flex, which it's 2020, who ran flex last year? You know, like I think I saw flex like one time in film from somebody. I, we didn't, nobody we played all year played flex. That's hard to guard, okay? Teams with multiple screening actions, if we're not switching, it can get hard to guard. Um, so that stuff's hard to guard. But again, in, in today's basketball, Everybody is, you know, everybody's running dribble drive, dribble penetration, spread and drive, space and plot pace, whatever. Um, <clears throat> good post players. That's why we spend so much time on it, uh, is good post players can be hard to handle. Uh, if teams go 1-4 flat on you, you know, that's another thing. There is no gaps when they're 1-4 flat. We may just send a double. If teams do go 1-4 flat on us, we will prepare for that. So that'll be one of those things we spend time on working on. All right. Hey, as soon as we recognize flat, we're going to jump into our trap and two, three. <clears throat> and that's what we do. If teams go one, four low on us, we're in our trap and two, three immediately. And we fly our two guys at the ball handler. Our other three guys are covering those things. And we're just, I'm, we're not going to try to guard it. Cause if you got somebody good enough to go one, four flat, they can probably score. Um, that's how we handle that. Flare screens are really hard to handle. I had a clip. I'm not going to show it. It's a flare screen. Um, you know, when you're in the gaps in the pack line, flares so again that's one of those things with scouting we'll spend a lot of time things that i know that are going to hurt us is what we'll spend the most time in prep for um <clears throat> some things like if you're playing a team that's a heavily screening team some things um you can increase your pressure we've done that before where okay they're not really looking to beat us off the dribble uh let's increase our ball pressure we might if they're pass and cut away we might trap the first pass down <clears throat> we don't trap side to side but at the first pass down we might trap uh, if they're passing cut away from the ball. Um, 
You know, I, I've not switched anything in, against one opponent in six years I switched. Um, I just didn't feel like we needed to switch. So that, that's not what we do. <clears throat> uh, as far as the change of pace defense, another thing I've, I've learned through mistakes, I think it's a mistake to try to, like, if you need to create turnovers or you start getting down, I think it's a mistake to try to say, all right, well, now we're going to play pressure man. It's going to be counterintuitive to everything you've taught. You've built habits. Don't do it. If you want to try to, like, figure out some kind of trapping zone um, or just a regular zone to try to mix it up, I would not try to have a, a, a new variety of man as my change of pace defense. Um, it's just it's too counterintuitive. I think it's a mis- it was a huge mistake I made for a long time. Um, we, we just – that's not what we're going to do. <clears throat> ball screens, at our level, again, like I don't think people run much ball screens. So we don't, uh, we don't spend a ton of time. We're, we, we're going to trap ball screens. And if you, if you show that – if you show you can handle it or you show you're ready for it, or you pick and pop us, um, you know, Mercy did some pick and pop stuff to us, so we couldn't trap it, uh, then, you know, we'll just usually, we typically go under. You know, there's not many kids that are making pull-up threes over the top of ball screens. It just ain't happening. And if you're that good, then we might, then we probably will go over it. Or, you know, even with Mercy, they did a lot of ball screen stuff. We, we may switch certain actions. <clears throat> That's where, you know, you just kind of have to decide. We just don't see enough ball screen at our level, I don't think, <clears throat> to, to deal with a ton of it. I already mentioned Blob D, uh, you know, guard and baseline out of bounds. I'm a big proponent. Just let it get, let them get it in. You know, we, we, we just stay away um, and we let it go in over our head. One thing I'll say is we do not guard the elbows. Uh, this is the best adjustment I've made to my baseline out of bounds defense. If you play man, you know, like every box set for them to score, they need you to guard the elbow. Like if you're up there with your man at the elbow, you're going to get screened. You're going to create help. You're going to create an easy situation. We, our kids know it's a fundamental thing of our program. You know, it's just fundamental. Kids know it. Do not guard the elbows. Get away. If they throw it in over our heads, we can go get it and we'll sit down and we'll guard. That's our identity anyway. <clears throat> um, don't foul. You know, like all this is for naught if, if you're fouling the crap out of people. Um, you know, so we, we don't foul. One thing that I think may help with that some, we talk a lot. We're like, hey, let's be dead last in the region maybe the state in block shots. Like, let's be dead last in block shots. I hate blocking shots. Uh, for every one you get clean, you know, there's all these fouls, and, and it's, it's – I hate it. So we, we do not like – I mean, I'm on my guys. This has been the biggest struggle with my kids this year because it's the coolest thing in the world to block shots for some reason. You know, all eight people in the gym watching us will go, oh, you know, and like, like guys, it ain't that cool, okay? Like, stop fouling. Stop fouling. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a huge jerk about fouling and about trying to block shots. I mean, I, I probably, you know, I say don't block shots and get to two feet 100 times a day. And I probably don't say it enough. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer with this, with any defense, but for this, it makes it easy to do it. Cut the head off the snake. <clears throat> I, I, think, I think probably three times all year, the other team's leading scorer for the season was the leading scorer against us. There's enough things we can do. Like, I just, I don't want your best player to have their best night. And so we're going to do whatever we have to do to cut the head off the snake, um, especially at our level. You can get away with it. I think every team, you know, most teams have one guy that's not a, a multi-level player, you know, or, or a uh, – you can cheat some things. And so we'll cheat stuff to take away your best player. Uh, you know, and then kind of the last thing, I guess, is, is a mindset and goes back to your identity. You know, convince your kids. You talk about wanting to be good defensively. All this stuff is great, but you can become a little – you can become a lot better defensively just by convincing your kids it's the coolest thing in the world to be great defensively. You know, and, like, there's – you can systematically go about doing that. <clears throat> One thing we do is after every game we go in and we tell our kids, like, hey, that was the lowest point total they've scored all year. <clears throat> in our 30-odd games – you know, 25, 24, 25 times, we held the other team to their lowest point total. Uh, you know, we held South Laurel, I think it was like 14 points lower than their next highest total. And you talk about giving them something to believe in, something to buy into. After Christmas, it got to the point where our kids are asking, was that their lowest? Was that the lowest of the season? They, they want to know. And they care that much. They're that excited 
about being elite defensively that they want to know. You know, we, we shifted from they want to know who had the most, like who, who had the most buckets, who got, the, who got assists, who did this, to did we hold them to their lowest point total of the season. That was a big deal to us. And, you know, I, I'm not a huge write stuff on the whiteboard at the beginning. You know, like goals we'll come back to. Like, I, I don't think we're going to go out here and talk about let's hold them to X percent. Some people are good at it. I'm not. But I, at, at, against certain opponents on certain nights, I might say, all right, guys, look, we're getting ready to play them. They, they're, they're low, you know, the, they've been held to 45. That was the lowest anybody held them all year. Can you hold them under 40? Can you do it? I don't know. And, and they go right into that game, like, at the end of the first quarter, did they score 10? Are they on pace at halftime? Guys, they've got 20. They're halfway to 40. And they're constantly checking in on that. And so that's one, you know, we, we build that buy-in. And we just tell them, you know, in preseason, in conditioning, we're going to be the best defensive team in the state of Kentucky. We're going to be the best defensive team in the state of Kentucky. Our kids believe it. You know, even if we didn't lead the state in points per game allowed, they still would have believed in their minds that we were the best defensive team in the state of Kentucky because that's the mindset that we built in. But also everything we do does go into that. You know, every, we're, we're thoughtful about how all these things go into it, how our offense runs. Um, it, we, we think about all these things. Uh, based on how we can we be elite defensively and how can we get our kids to buy into that. You know, that's, you know, that's a lot, I know. But that's, hey, if you were interested in implementing it, that's a, you know, I mean, there's a lot there. I've got a, uh, you know, I've got a whole binder just full of a bunch of old stuff and junk and drills and ideas and teaching points. If you're interested in more of it, you know, I can always give you more. Uh, if you have questions, if you want to see film, uh, you know, whatever. I, I, I try to, over the years, clip stuff, <clears throat> you know, post the wall-ups, all that stuff. So, uh, if you're interested in anything, you know, by all means, um, I'll, I'll unmute everybody. And, you know, if anybody has anything, any questions, any thoughts, you know, I feel free. Well, I, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, I love sharing the game. I appreciate, you know, everybody kind of, I appreciate everybody joining in. Um, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. So, um, I mean, if you guys don't have any, I mean, anybody have anything about anything else, maybe not pack line or anything else at all? Hey! Well, I won't keep everybody all day. I know uh, we all got lives and stuff to get into and more quarantine to handle. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll get off here. I did record it. So if you want, you know, I, I've got a couple people that asked for it. So I can get it to them. If you want it, I can probably figure out a way to get it to you or something like that. But um, I appreciate you guys' friendship and, and love kind of learning alongside with you guys. Thanks, Wyatt. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for doing this. See you, Coach. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach. See you guys. I'm sorry, I had my mute on. Did anybody say anything? I was just getting into the workout. I like that. Yeah, I know. I I need a little motivation to get going. Yeah, me too. You should just sign off. If you could, I put sent you a private message on there. Just send, if you could send me that recorded when I had to step out and walk, take my dog outside. So I got you. Yep, I'll do it. All right, appreciate it. Yep, thanks. See you guys. See you.